Hey everyone, I'm Hashem. Thanks for tuning in to another Pushing Film video. Today I'm going to be talking about this copy stand, which is Negative Supply's Basic Riser Mini. Now this riser was sent to me by Negative Supply for the purpose of review, but I wasn't paid for making this video, so I'm going to give my honest opinion on it. I'm going to break the video down into a few chapters that you can check out, including some pros and cons at the end. So even though it is one of their basic offerings, as the name implies, the build quality is actually quite good. So let's talk about that first. First thing I noticed was that it was uh, quite solid. It's made out of a solid metal base, for example. Looks like some kind of powder coated steel. And then there's this aluminium column and a, a head unit or part here, which is made of composite of carbon fiber and aluminium. And uh, yeah, the, the column being aluminium as well. And yes, we say aluminium here in Australia in case you're more used to saying aluminum, which I know some people say. But anyway, there are a couple of what looks like 3D printed parts as well. Otherwise, some metal fixtures, including all the screws, and it was easy to put together. Yeah, it was quite easy and makes it ideal for perhaps if you want to travel with your uh, copy stand for whatever reason. It's quite solid, well built, and it has a really smooth rising action. You just loosen this knob on the end and you can lower it and raise it to suit the film that you're scanning and the height that you need it according to your lens and the film format. And yeah, as soon as you tighten it, it sits quite tight and it's not going to move uh, once you've set it in place. So let's talk about the suitability. Negative Supply aims this copy stand at mirrorless cameras, whether they're crop sensor mirrorless like this Fuji X-T3 or uh, full frame mirrorless cameras like Sony A7s and even some DSLRs that are smaller like crop sensor DSLRs for example, entry level DSLRs. So more suited to smaller lighter cameras. As you might know for myself, I for example scan with a 5D Mark IV and a 100mm macro lens. Even though I could mount this on this camera and I could scan with it, I put it on there, I was able to scan. It's not the most suitable for a heavier setup like that, especially if the camera is a little bit lopsided. What I found with uh, the 5D, for example, is that because the 5D is much heavier on the grip side, the camera was susceptible to getting bumped and uh, drifting. Whereas with this Fuji X-T3, it's staying in place after having tightened it. So when it comes to the film formats, you could scan with this Basic Riser Mini. You can do 35 mil and 120, but of course it will depend on the, the macro lens you're using uh, on your camera. Uh, this is actually not my camera. As I said, I don't normally scan with the smaller mirrorless setup. This is Sarah's camera that I borrowed just for the purpose of testing. And I've just put a close up uh, lens on the front of this um, kit lens, which um, works fine. Not the most ideal, but it works. So if you were to scan 35 mil, uh, you could get away with the equivalent of a 100 mil macro uh, equivalent on full frame. But if you were gonna scan 120, you would probably need a shorter uh, macro lens, something that's uh, shorter than 75 mil on full frame equivalent, even at the, the highest point on the riser. So yes, you can scan 120 and 35 mil, but if you're gonna do 120, especially the larger 120 sizes like 6.7, you would need a shorter macro lens, like for example, a 65 mil equivalent or, or 50 something. So in terms of suitability, smaller cameras, lighter setups, shorter focal lengths for 120 and uh, yeah, Definitely not going to be ideal for putting a GFX with a macro lens on it, which um, is something, by the way, that I'm going to be testing out soon. I'm borrowing this GFX from Fujifilm Australia, and I will be putting out some content soon looking at the difference in scan quality that you can get from a, a larger sensor like the Fuji GFX. But moving on to the next section, I want to talk a little bit about the usage of this copy stand. It's quite easy to assemble once you receive it. It was only in uh, two parts. For me so it's just a matter of screwing it onto the base and then in terms of mounting the camera again quite easy they actually uh, provide a little allen key that is just sitting in the top of the copy stand there so you just use that to insert into the the little screw inside the head and um, tighten and loosen it from that point in order to mount your camera one note i would make on this is that even though it does work to tighten the a camera onto the head well I, with my background in working with tools and cars and stuff in the past, I would probably just recommend using a good old fashioned right angle Allen key if you have one. I feel like almost everyone, especially photographers, has one of these lying around because with the right angled Allen key, you will get a little bit more leverage when you're tightening that camera on. 
As mentioned with that larger camera that I tried on there, it was susceptible to drifting. So especially if you don't tighten the camera on to this mounting point well, because there's not much surface area, it is better off tightening it with one of these if you have one, but that's just my personal recommendation. You can use the provided tool. It's just not gonna give you as much tension. So that's really all there is to it in terms of usage. A copy stand isn't something too complicated. It does have uh, non-slip rubber feet at the bottom. It sits quite stable. And in terms of its uh, leveling, the copy stand is designed to already come level. So I tested it out using the good old mirror trick, putting that under the, the lens and the camera does sit parallel to the base, which is what you want. In terms of mounting it um, parallel in terms of this angle, you want to do that at the point of tightening the camera on, make sure it's straight, and uh, you can use one of these handy little um, sophisticated bubble levels. And as I can see on that, it is level out of the box. So for the price point, the usage is quite good. And moving on to the price point, it is 179 US dollars for this basic riser mini, which is actually, I think, one of the cheapest copy stands, especially designed for film scanning that you can get out there. The only cheaper copy stands I've seen are these really basic ones that you find on Amazon, which are actually more designed for phones or point and shoot cameras. I wouldn't recommend using them for scanning. You can get more sophisticated uh, copy stands from other brands, whether it's on Amazon or B&H from the Kaiser, for example, which is probably 250 US dollars to 500, depending on the model. And from Negative Supply themselves, the next one up is their basic riser Mark II, which uh, comes in at 299 US dollars. And then they have the Pro Riser Mark II, which comes in at about 500 US dollars. So value for money, really good. 179 US dollars translates to, I don't know, probably 250 Australian if I was guessing, but you can also buy it as part of a kit. So if you don't have uh, a film holder, for example, or a light source, they do a kit where it's a basic riser with light 35 mil film holder and the stabilizing attachment for that, which would make it good for someone who's just getting into scanning film at home, already has a camera, but needs the rest of the kit to get started. And that kit is, um, at the time of me making the video, 379 US dollars, including the riser and the, the holder and the light and the stabilizing mask for 35 mil. So that's a pretty good deal, especially considering they do free shipping to the US on anything over $75 and free shipping to uh, worldwide on anything over $199. So value for money, pretty good, especially for what you get. All right, let's round up the video with some pros and cons. The pros I found about this were the build quality the compact size, the small footprint and amount of real estate it takes up on your desk if you're gonna be using it in a more cramped setup. And it's great for users of uh, smaller or lighter mirrorless cameras, especially with a nice sort of weight distribution like this Fuji that I have here. And in terms of the cons, the only one I was able to, to come up with, and again, it's a bit of a personal nitpick of mine, was just the, uh, the tool for tightening. Because there is no you know, knob in there to actually get a, a good amount of leverage with your thumb, for example, they do provide this, which you have to insert at an angle. But I just find, again, you're gonna get more leverage just by using a normal right angled Allen key, which is up to you, something I would recommend doing if you have one. All right, guys, so in conclusion, I am really uh, impressed by the Basic Riser Mini from Negative Supply. Even though it might not be the most suitable for larger cameras, they have other products to suit you if you have something larger like the aforementioned GFX or a full frame DSLR with 100 mil. Uh, but if you suit the target audience of this particular riser, I think it makes a great deal, especially if you buy it in one of those kits and they do those uh, promos every now and then where they might include some discount or freebie or the free shipping. So um, definitely check out their website if you want more information on the current deal because you might not be watching this video at the time of me releasing it. And in terms of the uh, suitable lens that you would need, depending on the film format you're scanning, you can also check out their website and their YouTube channel. They have a video on that where they explain the different types of focal lengths that would work. And uh, because there's gonna be a lot of variation depending on the sensor size, the film format, the lens you're using, I won't go into all the detail of which lens would suit which setup, but I'm sure the guys at Negative Supply will be more than happy to help you if you send them the information based on your camera. So I would like to thank Negative Supply for sending me one of their basic riser minis for review. I am looking forward to reviewing more of their products, including some of the rest of the basic kit that I was sent. I'm still going through and testing some of this stuff and uh, also have the, the 120 Pro Carrier, which is so far working out really nicely. 
And uh, yeah, look forward to those videos on the channel. If you're not familiar with the whole process of scanning film using a camera, I have a whole video dedicated to a comprehensive uh, way of doing it. So if you want some information on how I scan film and the way I would recommend to go through that process, check out that video on the channel. I have other videos on the channel as well related to film scanning and using Negative Lab Pro and so on. So if you want any other information, check out the description of the video. Thanks for all your support on the channel as usual, and I'll see you on the next Pushing Film video.